Hi, it's me, Sadie Mae with the Awesome Orange. I'm back with another awesome build. This one might look a little familiar because I'm making it out of the same white oak barn wood that I made my media console out of. This new one's got character and curves for days. Let's get started. Like most projects, this one's starting over at the miter saw where I'm gonna be trimming down the pieces to a rough length before milling them. This will just make it easier for the milling process. Now that they're trimmed to that rough length, let's make them square. And we're gonna do this by running the face side through the jointer first. Once we get that flat, then we're gonna run the edge side through the jointer so we'll have two square edges. Next over to my new thickness planer, which I am totally loving. This is gonna get that other flat side flat. I'm not planing all of these to the same thickness. I'm just trying to get them uh, flat and leave as much material as possible. Then over to the table saw, we're gonna be ripping these to one and a half inch strips because we're gonna be going for an awesome stacked look for the legs. Did I mention a lot of ripping? A lot and a lot of ripping. Now to turn all these strips into legs, I grabbed a couple of clamps and start randomly spacing them to where I think the colors and the character are gonna look good. And I wanna make sure that they're at least 17 inches in height. Then I make sure that my glue bottle is full because we are gonna be using a ton of glue on this project. And then one by one, I'm adding glue to each of the boards and I'm doing this with a glove on my hand. I just find it's easier to spread and get a fast, even coat this way rather than a brush or a roller. I love with these clamps that once I'm done gluing up, I can just lift it up off my workbench and set it on the floor up and out of the way. Look at all that good glue squeeze out. I think my supervisor approves. Now on to the second leg. Oh, and more glue. <laughs> These are some heavy legs. Watch, I just got glue all over my tummy. <laughs> but one of the most satisfying parts of a glue up is scraping all the excess glue off my workbench and off the piece. I like to do this once it gets a little bit tacky, not completely dry. It seems to come off cleaner and I don't get chip out. If, if I wait too long, it can tend to chip out the wood. Oh yeah, my vision is totally coming to life and I am just loving the look of these legs. Now on to the top. After milling boards, this time to the same thickness, I'm gonna go ahead and rip them down to two and a half inch wide strips at the table saw. This is the same width that I used on my floating media console, so I think the tops will kind of match and mirror one another. So that's why I went with this width. Now to make some more room on the workbench for another glue up, but not before we make sure that awesome Oscar has some water. It was a hot day that day. Okay, back to the glue up. This time we're gonna be gluing these on their edge side. So I want this to be a 48 inches long by 24 inches wide. And I'm just gonna make sure that the character and all the colors are in a good order before I glue them up. Plus I decided to take the legs out of the clamps first and just trying to get a visual of what they're gonna look like on the top before I glue it. Make sure my proportions and everything are working out. So far, so good. Now let's glue again. Oh, more glues needed. I told you we're gonna be using a lot of glue on this project. 
This time I'm spreading the glue with a brush. Uh, it's the same width as the edge, so it was easier than having to get another glove dirty. I'm loving all the character in this white oak barn wood, the knots, the different color variations. It's good. Again, more scraping glue. Love these clamps that I can stand it up and scrape the glue on both sides of my workpiece. Next day when it's dry, took all the clamps off and it's time to give the legs and this top some shape. Starting with the top, I used a straight edge and my cordless circular saw to cut off all the rough edges. I did make these oversized and then the top just needs to be 24 inches. My first run through, it was kind of moving on me because I didn't clamp it down well enough. So I did do a second run to make sure everything was straight. Then I took the piece over to the table saw to cut the second side. Since it's only needed to be 24 inches wide, it fit on my table saw and that way I knew that the two sides were gonna be perfectly parallel with one another. Okay, now for the part that I'm super excited about, turning this rectangle into a pill shaped. I'm using a circular jig, circular, circle jig with my trim router and a straight bit to cut this. How I ended up determining where to place my circle jig was since it's 24 inches wide, I did half of that, which is 12 inches, but I didn't want to do a circle. So I went down 12 and a half inches. That allowed me to start the bit off the piece and end off the piece and not accidentally cut into a circle. And then I did take several passes, probably four or five passes on each side until I got the piece off. Then I repeat it on the other side. You do need to make a mark and drill a small hole that the circle jig is going to pivot on. So you always wanna make sure that you're adding this on the underside of the tabletop because it'll never be seen down there. Okay, and then several passes, four or five of them, until we get that awesome pill-shaped table top. Did you know wood moves? It actually loses or gains moisture depending on the humidity in the air. And this varying humidity levels can cause wood to shrink or expand. The point where wood doesn't lose or gain moisture is referred to as equilibrium moisture content or EMC. Before starting a project, you should ensure that the wood is dried to a moisture content that is within 2% of the EMC where you live. Because if the wood is too wet and shrinks after, it can cause problems like shrinking, cracking, warping, and none of us want that to happen to our projects. So how do you measure moisture in wood? with a moisture meter. Wagner Meter's Orion 950 is a top of the line model that can not only figure out the EMC where you live, but it has a large sensor giving you more accurate readings every time. It can measure the moisture content in wood a quarter inch thick up to one and a half inches thick and is adjustable depending on the species of wood that you're measuring. On average, ideal moisture levels are between six and eight percent, but can vary depending on the EMC where you live. For more information on this meter and all other meters Wagner offers, see the link in the description box below. Now let's trim the legs. I'm using my crosscut sled on my table saw to trim them down. Right there you see me hitting my workbench, so I needed to make an adjustment for that. But other than that, these came, it worked great to trim these. Then flip it over and I can get the other side trim as well. These legs are looking so cool. Let's kind of get a visual of what we're working with. We've got our two legs and our top cut out, but I think we need something to support the top across. So here I am cutting a few pieces to get glued up 
to make some aprons. Aprons can't sit on top of the legs, so we're gonna need to make some recesses or dados in the legs in order for the aprons to sit inside of. So here I am just marking where I want those and kind of getting a visual of where they're gonna go into. I did put them closer to the middle because I wanted um, them to support out longer to the edge of the pill shape. Once I got one side done, I did use that as a guide to mark the other side. And then to cut these, I was using just a homemade jig clamped to the workpiece and then back to my trim router with that straight bit again. And I just put that in there, cut it out, then lower the bit, cut it a little bit deeper, lower the bit, cut it a little, little bit deeper, and so on and so on until I get the depth that I'm needing for these aprons. Using the jig, I wasn't able to hook up my vac to my trim routers, so there was sawdust everywhere in the shop. Another dry fit, and then a little added touch. I cut out some one and a half inch pieces to sit on the sides of the table to give the top a recessed look on the legs. I did this by adding it later, um, just because I didn't want to have to cut all that material away. Now we're gonna give this piece more curves. I'm adding a one and a half inch round over bit to my router. Didn't fit in the trim router, so I had to bust out the big one. And then we're cutting down both sides of the legs to give it more of a pill shape to match or mimic the top. I should have put a piece of wood on the back there to prevent that blowout, but I totally forgot, just got excited making these roundovers. And then some more curves on the top. This time I'm just using a quarter inch roundover and then it was time for assembly. So I'm making sure that the spacing is right and that everything is square as I put it together. We don't want it to be a leaning tower here. So lots of checking for square and then I'm marking where I want the screws to go. So I'm gonna use a screw through the apron and into the legs. I marked the center, drew a little pilot hole that's recessed, and then put in some three and a half inch screws. This is oak. I did make sure to pre-drill before inserting those screws just to make sure everything went together without any splitting or cracking. And then the last step is to attach the tabletop to the base. I'm using my biscuit joiner here to create some slots because we're gonna be using Z clips to attach the top to the base. And I'm using them because they allow for seasonal wood movement. Like we talked about earlier with moisture, this wood can still gain moisture and so expand or shrink depending on the humidity in the air. So if any seasonal movement, this, these clips will help prevent any splitting, cracking or warping. So they go into the slot and then screw into the top. These little screws are a pain to get in there, but I did get them all in there. And just like that, we have an awesome pill-shaped, curvy, mid-century, awesome coffee table. Like I said earlier, I don't know how I'm gonna seal this coffee table until I get new flooring into this living room. So you're gonna to have to stay tuned and see what I decide. But I absolutely love how it came out. I love all the character that it provides, the curves, everything about it. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something or got inspired to build something awesome for yourself. And if you did, make sure you hit that like button and that you're subscribed to my channel so you don't miss out on how I end up sealing this piece. And until next time, remember, build loud, build wild, and have an awesome day.